my lord. Oh, pervading. Oh, from my respectful base. Let's do it. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. The creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universes. He's conscious of all manifestation. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, he is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes, Appears factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations in the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra. Paramo Nimatsuranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Achavastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulano Shimad Bhagwate Mahamuni Krite Himva Pareer Ishura Sadyohi de Aburujite Tra Kriti Behi Susubis Takshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Uh, Don and Jaya, uh, my Bhagavad Gita is in my room. You know, just bring it. Nigama kalpatarur galitam falam. Sukamukha damrita dravya samyutam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska bhuvibhavaka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sisugadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana Hiryantaksto Badrani Hiryantaksto Hiya Badrani Vidu Noti Suhitsatam 
Sri Krishna, the person of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart. I'm just going to read this because it's a little different. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to put you through that rush. To hear about Krishna from the Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend, and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta pray su su nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati utama sloke bhakti bhavati naistaki. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Nadarajas tamo bhava tamalova dayas chaye chete taranavidam ditvam sattve prasiddhati by development of devotional service, one becomes free from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. Ivam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yoga daha bhagavat tattva vigyanam bhaktasangasya jayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya siyante chasyakarmani Krista Evat Manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, uh, I'm sorry, a Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 1, Chapter 15, Text number 36. But yesterday I promised that I would address several issues that we discussed. So the first one I want to discuss is uh, what is the Brahma Jyoti and is the Brahma Jyoti full of spirit souls? So Prabhupada writes Okay, in Ishopanasad Mantra 17. Mm. Prabhupada says, the Brahma Jyoti emanating from the transcendental body of the Lord is full of spiritual sparks that are individual entities with the full sense of existence. And Brahma Samhita 540. Uh, it's a quote from the Madhya Lila, 10th chapter, 168th verse. 
living at these rest on the Brahma, Brahman effulgence. And then Bhagavad Gita 2.17 says, such atomic particles of the spirit whole are composed are compared to the sunshine molecules. In the sunshine, there are innumerable radiant molecules. Similarly, the fragmental parts of the Supreme Lord are atomic sparks of the rays of the Supreme Lord called by the name Prabha or the superior energy. And that's also quotes uh, Brahma Samhita 540. Yes, yeah, Prabha, Prabhavato. Again, it says uh, the uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya 143. Uh, it says that everything is resting on the rays of his bodily effulgence. Okay, so pretty clear that the Brahma Jyoti is made up of infinite number of spirit souls. Especially the quote from uh, Ishupanishad Mantra 17, the Brahma Jyoti emanating from the transcendental body of the Lord is full of spiritual sparks that are individual entities with the full sense of existence. And then he says, uh, again, Bhagavad Gita 217, individual particles, in the, the individual particle of the spirit soul is a spiritual atom smaller than the material atoms, and such atoms are innumerable. And then in the Brahma Simita 521, Prabhupada says, the jivas are the infinitesimal particles of his spiritual effulgence and are therefore not perishable like the mundane, like mundane things. And Brahma Samhita 5.16 says, the innumerable jivas as spiritual particles emanating from the oversoul in the form of pencils of rays of effulgence. And then Brahma Samhita 5.10, the constituent particles in the form of pencils of effulgence of Mahavishnu are manifest as individual souls or jivas. So the many quotes substantiate that the Brahma Jyoti is full of innumerable jiva souls as pencils of light. They don't have a specific body, but they are existing as pencils of light. Okay, now the harder question is about where do the living entities come from in the material world? Do they fall from Goloka? Do they fall from Vaikuntha? Do they fall from what's called a Tadasta, which is uh, in between the material and spiritual worlds? Well, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, and uh, some of the Goswamis, uh, they claim that. Uh, the, uh, the in the tatasta or the uh, the marginal position on one side is the material world the other side is the spiritual world these these jivas some jivas are there and they make a decision whether to uh, attract it to the material world or to the spiritual world and the ones that are attracted to the material world, they fall down the material world from that position. And the ones that are attracted to the spiritual world, they enter the spiritual world from that position of uh, marginality. Yeah, Tadasa. However, Srila Prabhupada says, hmm. first of all, he says, the jiva does not come from the Brahma Chyoti. In other words, 
the Brahmachyoti is not the origin of the jiva. He says on, in letter 70.7.14, souls come from Vaikuntha. Okay, then also, yes, it's 70.7.14. Uh, 70 he says, all spirit souls come from Vaikuntha. And 70.7.14. 0.06.20 says existence in the impersonal Brahman is also non Krishna conscious. Those in Brahman effulgence are in the fallen condition. And in uh, letter 76.10.62, he says it is correct that the Brahma Jyoti is comprised of spirit souls and then ultimately nothing is impersonal, which is what I was saying yesterday, nothing impersonal. Even the Brahma Jyoti is not something impersonal. Well, it looks like that. Just like the ocean looks impersonal, but you see it's full of living entities. You know? Okay. So, uh, is there a difference between what Prabhupada is saying and what Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't have a specific body. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So is now the hard question is is Prabhupada differing from the previous acharyas? No, he's not. He he doesn't. Well, he wait a minute. There is a quote where Prabhupada says. Uh, Well, first of all, there's another interesting point. Uh, he says, there's a question. What is the difference between the spirit souls comprising the Brahma Jyoti and the spirit souls here in Maya? And Prabhupada's answer is, in the Brahma Jyoti, the spirit souls, on account of their impersonal views, are devoid of a body. This is uh, a room conversation on August 17, 1971 in London. He says, in the Brahma Jyoti, the spirit souls, on account of their impersonal views, are devoid of a body. Exactly like here in Maya, there are ghosts who are devoid of any gross bodies. The ghost, being devoid of a body, he suffers terribly because he is unable to satisfy his senses. The spirit souls in Brahma Jyoti, although they have no desire for sense gratification, still they feel inconvenience like the ghost and they fall down again in Maya's atmosphere and develop a material body. Okay, now there's more to this. There's more to this. He says, in the Bhagavad, therefore, it is said that persons who are impersonalists and do not develop the dormant devotional attitude, their intelligence is not pure. Because of want of a spiritual body, they come down again to the material world. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly said, by the Lord, that the only way of not coming back to the material world is to be promoted to the spiritual planets. For the impersonalist, there's no such assurance of not falling down in the whole Vedic literature. The conclusion is that without developing the spiritual body and without being situated on one of the spiritual planets, the so-called liberation is also an illusion. Liberation in Brahman is also an illusion. A spirit soul who falls down from the Brahma Jyoti to the kingdom of Maya may have a chance by as of associating with a pure devotee, and then he may be elevated to the spiritual planets of Vaikuntha or to Goloka Vrindavana. From the Brahma Jyoti, there's no direct promotion to the spiritual planets, and it's clearly stated in the Bhagavatam that such souls fall down. So that's uh, the uh, verse. Uh, 
in the uh, Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 2, uh, verse number um, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what that verse is. Uh, anyway, I'll tell you what that verse is. Also, in a... Uh, yeah. All right, so now we haven't... Let's go back to the real tough question, and that is... So in other words, my Vaidhi's... My body say, Brahma Satyam Jagat Mitya. That means that the Brahman effulgence is real, the material world is false. That right there is wrong. The material world is not false, it's temporary. And uh, so, but while it's temporarily manifest, uh, it has uh, reality in the sense that. Uh, it's pointing to reality. It's because it is a perverted reflection uh, in, of the spiritual world. And it's coming from the spiritual world. The spiritual world is real. Therefore, what's coming from the spiritual world is also real. But it, it's illusory. It's not false. It's illusory. Because whatever goals people are trying to achieve in the material world, like sense gratification, uh, it's it's temporary and it's illusory because at one point it's not there anymore and they have nothing. Okay, so uh, the question about where the spirit souls come from. Uh, so uh, when Prabhupada says Vaikuntha, well, is the marginal position, the Tadasta, is it in by Kunta, or is it in the material world? Well, it's right between. So, uh, but it's not in the material world. And it's not exactly in the spiritual world. So therefore, we come to the, the question of uh, the uh, Kaka Talanyaya. The Kaka Talanyaya is a uh, Vedic aphorism which means, which says that there's a fruit, uh, a sweet fruit on a tree, and a, and a crow landed on the fruit, and the fruit immediately fell down. Now, was it the crow that caused the fruit to fall down, or did the, was the fruit destined to fall down at that particular moment? You can argue it both ways and not come to any definite conclusion. So, is the Tatasta in Vaikuntha or is it not in Vaikuntha? You could argue it both ways. Is it in the material world or not in the material world? You could argue it again. So, there are certain questions that become bewildering because of simultaneous an inconceivable oneness and difference, which is present everywhere in the material world and the spiritual world. And therefore, some things are beyond the, the logical or rational comprehension of living entities. So the, the statement that the, is the tatasta in the spiritual world? Well, it's right on the edge of it. And and, it's, and you cannot say it's, it is, and it cannot say it's not. You can argue it both ways. Therefore, uh, Prabhupada's statement is not exactly wrong. He doesn't say they fall down from Goloka. You see, that's, that's the difference. He doesn't say one can, but he does say one can fall down from any position. Let's, let's see where he says that. I already read that. Uh, and uh, 
his letters 70.2.60, Prabhupada clearly says, souls fall from any position. And it's due to inattention and, and the fact that they become attracted to the material energy out of envious, enviousness of Krishna. And then he does say in the letter 70.2.25, April 25th, 1970, there's always a chance of falling down from the spiritual world. Okay. But, yes. But he also says in the third canto uh, that you quoted yesterday, what, can, you, can you read what he says? Yes. When you when you're standing by the by this show, there's an analogy is given the fine line between the and the land. Yeah, it's very very fine. Means like you cannot say this land is wool, as you said. So, uh, in that sense. Prabhupada is right that it's no contradiction because the task is not mature world. Right. Because it, 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 that's the way Karanda uh, Kashai Vishnu in the Biraja Ocean lying there. Yeah. So the Tatasta is there. But another way to argue about that, that because Tatasta is Krishna's energy, so all Krishna's energies are spiritual. Yeah. And he also says, the Prabhupada clearly says, that we were all originally with Krishna, just like we we're all originally with our mother, right? But we can't remember it. Right? But you can't deny it because it says that everything is coming from Krishna. So, uh, and Krishna is, is, is uh, personally present in the spiritual world. And he's also present in the material world by his expansions. So, uh, again, you come to the question of achintya beda abeda tattva. Inconceivably, and uh, uh, inconceivably, one and different. So, uh, if we, that's why Lord Chaitanya's philosophy is perfect because it makes makes it very clear that there's going to be some things that are incomprehensible to us rationally with mm -hmm. our limited. Uh, mind and senses, uh, and we should simply accept it. It is possible to fall down from the spiritual world, but it's not possible to fall down from uh, Goloka you know, or certain place uh, or most of uh, Vaikunta. But on that dividing line uh, or that marginal position, it is possible to fall down. My spiritual world is a very, very Road like when the in the Biraja, yes, Mahavishnu line that's also so spirit because Supreme Lord in spiritual worlds is one, no different. If Mahavishnu, Karandaka Shai Vishnu is there, yeah, that's also spiritual. Well, that's also Vaikunta, yes, because another name of Lord is Vaikunta, right? So now, by the way, another name of Jiva is Tatasta. <laughs> so, so it, it, exactly because if the jiva is spiritual, yes. so it comes from spiritual, from the Lord. Yeah, it is spiritual. Okay, so in the letter to Jagadish seventy four fifty four, April twenty fifth, nineteen seventy, Prabhupada writes: "You're regarding your questions about how and from where did the conditioned souls fall." Your first question, if someone has a relationship with Lord Krishna and Krishna Loka, does he ever fall down? Good question. The so Prabhupada's answer, the souls are endowed with minute independence as part of their nature. 
and this minute independence may be utilized rightly or wrongly at any time. So there is always the chance of falling down by misuse of one's independence. But those who are firmly fixed up in devotional service to Krishna are making proper use of their independence, and so they do not fall down. Regarding, and so that's his answer. Okay. Regarding your second question, have the conditioned souls ever seen Krishna? Were they with the Lord before being conditioned by the desire of the Lord over material nature? Prabhupada's answer, yes. The conditioned souls are part and parcels of the Lord, and thus they were with Krishna before being conditioned, just as a child must have seen his father because the father places the child in the womb of the mother. Similarly, each soul has seen Krishna or the Supreme Father. But that at that time, the conditioned souls were resting in the condition called susupti, which is exactly deep sleep without dream or anesthetized state. Therefore, they do not remember being with Krishna when they wake up in the material world and become engaged in material affairs. I hope this will satisfy your question. Okay. <laughs> it's just inconceivable thing. Okay, so then... Uh, well, in the, in the letter of the Jagadi 70... Point zero seven point zero nine. There, Prabhupada clearly says these spirit souls and all spirit souls are coming from Vaikuntha, but in these material worlds, they are taking various grades of bodies according to their material activities. Okay, so okay, I'm, I think. Sorry, Maharaj. Yeah. Now, uh, the one logic is that now the Brahma majority because they. Innumerable living entities in Brahma Jyoti. Is yeah. Brahma is Brahma Jyoti in Vaikuntha? Yes. So in that sense, it's in Vaikuntha and it's in the material world. So if you, if you can argue on, on on this on this point, the living entity is actually the fall from Brahma Jyoti. Well, no, because no. which is part of Vaikuntha too? Because like you say yesterday, they they they, oh, they are fallen. Yeah, what well, Prabhupada clearly says, the position in Brahma Jyoti is fallen. Right. So it's just, and then also that this verse of... Uh, okay, let, of, this is discussed. This is discussed in a uh, conversation, August 17th, 1971, in a room conversation, where it says, Idam hi Vishwam Bhagavan ive taro. The whole cosmic manifestation is Krishna, but it appears it is different from Krishna. Idam hi Vishwam Bhagavan Ivetaro. This is a chintya beda beda sattva. So unless we accept the thesis or philosophy expounded by Lord Chaitanya, inconceivable one and different. Inconceivable. For us it is inconceivable. You cannot have any clear distinction. Therefore take it as inconceivable, a chintya. But from the theoretical or biological conclusion, everything is one, Krishna, that's all. And another example is that the finger is myself, but I am not the finger. This is the position. The hair, I am. I am the hair, but I am not the hair at the same time. This is like that. This is called achintya beda abeda, inconceivable. So then a question from a devotee. A related question also just like there is at the same time the oneness is there, there is distinction. Then between the spirit, Prabhupada, that distinction you cannot make clear, uh, devotee. I know, but still it's, it's not clear, but clear there is some distinction where a distinction, Prabhupada, distinction. There is distinction, there is no distinction. Devotee, yes, simultaneously. Prabhupada, simultaneous. Now, which one will we accept? Therefore, inconceivable. Right? Tadasta, it's in the spiritual world, but it's also right next to the material world. So it is and it isn't. Right? So which one are you going to accept? This analogy of the fine line of, of the shore, seashore, Prabhupada yes. gives a lot. I mean, the, the acharus will give him that. Yes. I think you because family, but you want to check with that. 
They will say about they give the analogy of the online the water. Yes. So then another devotee, you can't accept one or the other. You have to accept them both. Prabhupada, yes. Devotee, everything is related in Krishna. Prabhupada, yes. Devotee, yes. But there's also amongst the related things. There are related things because there is also diversity amongst them. Prabhupada must be. Devotee, that's right. In preaching, in the movement, that there is no diversity between the jiva souls who are living. Prabhupada, but there is diversity. Why not? <laughs> Devotee. And the Brahma Jyoti, they are saying, Prabhupada, Brahma Jyoti is combination of jiva soul. And Brahma Jyoti is emanation from Krishna. Brahma Jyoti is coming from Krishna. This is a function. Heat is coming constantly, incessantly from the fire. But still, heat is not fire. You cannot say heat is fire. Fire is far away. Devotee, that's right. So the constitutional nature of the entities that naturally form Brahma Jyoti is the same as the constitutional nature of the Jivatmas that are forming the living entities. Prabhupada, yes. It is comparison, a small spiritual spark, that's all. We are spark, so long it does not develop a body. That body is also the same. So it remains a spiritual spark. But because it is spirit, it cannot remain in that impersonal stage he wants to enjoy. So, so long he has forgotten, he develops a body which is called matter. Devotee, or else he develops a spiritual body, one or the other, Prabhupada, no. He is spirit, spiritual identity already. But as we are developing material body, similarly, we can develop spiritual body. <clears throat> and then devotee, you very clearly explained to me once in a letter that if the spirit soul then goes into the Brahma Jyoti, he is considered still fallen, still fallen. Does that mean the whole Brahma Jyoti is composed of spirit souls? Of, of fallen souls? You see my question. If I go there, I am a jiva soul, and I go to the Brahma Jyoti, I'm still fallen. Prabhupada, yes. Devotee. That means all jiva souls there are also fallen souls. Prabhupada, yes. Ribhati, uh, the devotee. That follows? Prabhupada. That is explained in Bhagavad Gita. Vibhinamsa, separated parts. Separated parts, Vibhinamsa. You can call it fallen, devotee. But we usually think of fallen as being forgetful. Prabhupada, yes, this is also forgetfulness. In the Brahma Jyoti, you are forgetful still because you are, that is stated in the Shastra, anadrita yusmad angraya, uh -huh. anadrita. They do not know how to adore the lotus feet of Krishna. That is forgetful. Think about that verse. Yeah. And then devotees, so they become separated. Prabhupada, yes. Okay, then there's a lot of other things from the Jaiva Dharma and so forth. But let's just leave it at that because uh, the more we discuss this, the more people want to argue. <laughs> There are some, you know, uh, ultimately it's the kaka nyala, nala vyaya, nyaya. Did the fruit fall down because the crow landed on it? Or was it destined to fall exactly at that moment? Uh, you can argue it both ways. So it, and those type of questions should not be pursued because you'll never come to a conclusion. Right. And it's very, very, very... Um well-known argument that ultimately everything is spiritual. Yes. We yeah. say that ultimately everything is spiritual. So. so tomorrow I'm going to explain the other point we were going to discuss today, but I'm going to leave it for tomorrow, and that is the, the difference between Nitya and Naimitic avatars. There are some avatars that are eternal, and some are just uh, temporary, temporary for a specific purpose. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Those are two. Those are those are the questions where uh, we stopped discussing yesterday and to uh, share it till today. So I think we've discussed this Brahma Jyoti issue. 
and that's settled. And uh, the, the question of where we fall from, we fall from Vaikuntha in the sense that Tadasta is and isn't part of spiritual yeah, energy of the of Vaikuntha. But definitely we don't fall down from Goloka. Hari Bo. All glories to Sila Bo. Hari Hari Hari. Yeah, it's very good to go through this, you 